Right, folks, we have a match. Yeah, Nick Varner versus Chris Austin. This is the winner's side match. Race to five, winner break here at uh, O'Brien's in Evansville, Indiana. I'm joined by Corey Vaughn from Harrisburg, Illinois. Corey, what do you predict here? Uh, I predict right. probably folks, slow. Folks, we have a match. Slow, yeah. yeah slow, Nick just Varner tactical versus battle. Chris Austin. This is the winner's side match. Race to five, winner break. I don't, I don't break think here, there's going to be too many run outs, uh, but... Yeah, you're right. You know, Nick Varner, 15, Corey, 20 predictor. years ago, this wouldn't even be, we wouldn't even have a conversation about prediction. Uh, uh, Chris, Chris uh, Austin does plays well, and Nick is yeah. up there in years. And and it's just, just uh, it's a pleasure to have him here playing and, and, and hanging out with us common folk. Yeah. I do know that Chris yeah, is a right. nervous wreck in this match. He's been talking talk about it early to today, having a conversation about uh, Chris uh, Chris uh, he was is really up here saying we're playing for a second, you know. It's a pleasure to have you here playing, hanging out with us common folks. Nick Varner's been everywhere. Yeah, you know, you're playing a nine-time world champion. I do know that Chris is a nervous wreck in this match. He's been talking about it early to today, having a conversation about it. Well. Well. I don't have a clue why our voice is repeating. Yeah, you know, you're playing a nine-time world champion. And my, my techie guru is in a match right now. I, I can talk on the mic, but I don't know how to do this stream stuff. It's not my, it's not my repertoire. Better on the other side of the camera. Yeah, I, I, I mean, they always said I got a face for radio. My <laughs> techie is this, uh, is this match the first rack, or are they just still? This is the first rack. Do this dream stuff. That's not my. It's not my repertoire. Figured out how to get that two opened up. Yeah, might be out. I mean, they always said I got a face for radio. <laughs> Uh, I'm this not sure what Chris took. I missed the first shot there. It looks like he's looking at the 10 ball. So my, my Never mind. Never mind on the 10 ball, Strat. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what Chris took. I missed the first shot there. It looks like he's looking at the 10 ball. Is he more comfortable in a jacket? He's always sporting a you know, I've noticed that. He, he plays in uh, the long sleeve tight jacket, which you would think would be uncomfortable. I sure can't do it. Hell, I can't play in a watch, <laughs> much less a tight jacket like that. But Chris is a bit of a strange character. You know, I've noticed that. He, he plays He's got some pretty nice back of the future shoes. Tight jacket, which you think would be uncomfortable. He actually paid some pretty good money for it. No, I can't play in a watch. You like what you like, I guess. That's right. But he is talented. I mean, you can't. Yes, yes, he is. Uh, but Chris is a bit of a strange character. You know, I've noticed that. He plays he's got some pretty nice back of future shoes. This here's the shot. He actually paid to pretty much. He's not clean from this. No, I can't play in a watch. You like what you like, Greg. That's right. Yeah. But he is talented. I mean, you can't. Yes, yes, he is. But Chris is a bit of a strange character. Nick uh, makes his way to debut to the table in this match. Yeah, I don't see any problems for him there. I think the three goes past the nine. Yeah, it looks like the three clears the four team to the table in this match. Seven balls down there all by itself. I mean, he's got a couple little areas he's got to work here in and out, but. Uh, I mean, he is Nick Varner, so uh, yeah, we'll just let him do the shoot, and we'll just sit here and watch. Right. Yeah, it looks like a three clear for 14 to the table on this match. Seven ball down there all by itself. I mean, he's got a couple little areas he's got to work uh, here in and out, but uh, I get the privilege I mean, of playing the loser this match. Well, that'll be fun, won't it? The other person, I'm gonna get. And, uh, and you already started out with an ex-pro, Ray Schultz, so... <laughs> I got a good, I got a good easy draw, didn't I? That's right. Well, that would be fun, won't it?
Guys, if you can take a minute and share your post if you're watching or you're starting out, that's what I'm saying. This is about, even with the repeat we got with the voices going on, that we, oh, the audio's awesome now. Thanks, Randy. Whatever I did, I fixed it, which is nothing. He may be, it might be sarcasm. It, it, it very well could be. Randy's not a very sarcastic guy. Share your post if you're watching or you're starting out, that's what I'm saying. This is about, even with the repeat we got with the voices going on, that we, oh, the audio's awesome now. Thanks, Randy. Whatever I did, I fixed it. I think the two and the four are going to be the question balls here. It, it, it very well could be. Yeah. If Randy's get, not a very sarcastic guy. Straight in on the <laughs> three ball, where you just stop it, and then shoot, and then shoot the four and decide after the two. Yep. Yeah. The audio's awesome now. Thanks, Randy. Be the key to the rack. Whatever I did, I fixed it. Yes. I think the two and the four are going to be the question Imagine balls. Imagine that, Junior. It, it, it very well could be. <laughs> Guy, we normally have these tournaments about once a month here at O'Brien's Ever in the end. We can kind of rotate back and forth and ball, nine ball. Yeah. Always a decent little payout here. Nobody's going to get rich, but we're going to have a good day of playing pool. Imagine that, Junior. Good atmosphere. Pool table. Great. Guy, we normally have these tournaments about once a month here. The food really is good here. We can kind of rotate back and forth and ball, nine ball. I'm surprised. Always a decent little payout here. Making cheese for earlier and it's a lot Everybody's bigger than I had expected. Have a good day and play in pool. Yeah, Brian, I'm waiting on Patrick. You know how it is. He's he's the guy that does that stuff, not me. And, uh, I'll see, I, just, I, I don't have a clue what to look for. If it was my PA system, I could figure that out. Greg Davis, yeah, it sounds Brian, like you need to switch your weekend, Patrick. buddy. You know how it is. He's, he's the guy that does that stuff, not me. You're always working the weekend we have a tournament. I don't have a clue what to look for. If it was my PA system, I could figure that out. He got good shapes there on the three to give himself a chance of getting on the Greg two. Davis, yeah, it sounds like he's switch your weekend. Looks like he's a little, little far down on the two where he's coming up to the top of the four. But he could just have a tournament. Go into the edge of the bottom of the four and have the cue ball drift down for the three. Yeah, it is. Looks like he's a little, little far down on the two. Yeah, it didn't go in a great spot, but he could just. Uh, I mean, he is going to the edge of the bottom. I wonder if he's going to try to come off the seven and bump it again on his way up. Well, there's a good chance, you know, with that angle. I mean, it's kind of a finesseful lead. And I can't tell if the eight goes by the 14. I believe it does. Looks like he's a little, little far down on the two. Yeah, he's going to the great spot. But he could just. I mean, he is going to the edge. If it goes somewhere, don't bump it on the seven. That's, that's right. Well, there's a good chance with that angle. I mean, it's kind of a finesseful lead. Give yourself a chance. I can't tell if the eight goes by the 14. I believe it does. <laughs> Well, he left himself, uh, that's right, kind of tough. Well, there's a good chance with that angle. I don't know if it goes to the side. He's going to have a tough cut, or we're going to see some Kentucky banking. Well, Nick's been known to bank before. He's looking at running it, though. Well, he left himself, uh, that's right, kind of tough. Come on down, Brian. And Nick Varner shows why he's Nick Varner. Well, Nick's been known to bank before. Huh? He's looking at running it, though. I don't know. No. Okay. Come on down, Brian. Nick takes the first match. And Nick Varner shows why he's Nick Varner. Well, Nick's been known to bank before. Huh? A really nice four ball cut. He's looking at running it, though. Five's a fairly short race. Come on down, Brian. Nick takes the first know, open match tournament. In, it definitely is a winner, break. Yes. So anything can happen. You never know. Chris might get a shot here. Break a run two, three, four. You never know. Yep. He might not get to shoot again. Nick Varner might just sit here and just do a little practice session. Yeah. Come on down, Brian. Last time I played Chris in a tournament, we played right here on that table. And he had me down three to zero. Anything can happen. You never know. Uh, I come back. I get I get a game, then I break and run three. I'm up four to three. He might not get to shoot again. You guys seem to have yourself a little rivalry every now and again. We do. I like Chris, and uh, I like giving him a lot of crap, too. So he takes it well. And, and, and also, he pisses me off from time to time. I come back. 
I get I get a game, but I'm ready to run three. I'm but he does support our tournaments. He supports what we're doing, and uh, so I give him credit for that. We do. I like Chris, and uh, I like very many of crap too. He takes it well. Yeah, Brian Ciphers. Uh, Ciphers, I appreciate that. Figure out the break. Yeah. Both of them are very capable of running it out. Yeah, Brian, you both. Ciphers, I appreciate that. Well, Chris absolutely had a good shot of getting out last game and just didn't get there. I'm going to figure out the break. I usually play there in center field in Harrisburg, and both we play on valleys and run it out. I think I've. Uh, Chris absolutely yeah. had a shot against the rails on the diamond are just and just amazing. Didn't get there. If you can get used to them, it just oh, it just makes the game that much more fun. Yeah. Yeah, he's got to, he stripes or solid? I think he's solid because he's wondering how to get on that four ball down there on the bottom rail. I mean, he's got lots of room on both sides to get on it. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, he's got to, he stripes or solid? I think he's solid because he's wondering how to get on that four ball down there on the bottom rail. Double, um, we've got lots of room on both sides to get on it. Yeah, he's got to, he's tried for solid. I think he's solid because he's wondering how to get on that floor ball down there on the bottom rail. They say we're a double, um, we've got lots of room on both sides to get on it. All right, guys, let us know if that fixed it. I'm going to uh, hand the mic over to my partner, Patrick, and he's going to join Corey here. I got to go to a match. What's up, Corey? Not much. Just watching some good pool. Yep. Did you shoot good earlier? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> I didn't get a chance to see you. No, uh, I got to play Mr. Ray Schultz, and he uh, he didn't have any mercy. Mm. It was straight business for him, and I was kind of waking up, I guess. I don't know what I was doing. Yeah, he uh, definitely doesn't shoot bad. No, no, he don't. I think it's something with Owensboro. Just those guys over there. Yes. I don't know if that's where he's from or if that where he currently lives, Mr. Varner. Yeah, yeah, he lives. Nick Varner, definitely. He has a shop there in Owensboro. And I think he lives there. I see. He's, uh, he's definitely shooting pretty good right here. Mm-hmm. I guess that eight passes. Uh, I'm assuming it does, or I don't think he would play for it. Oh, yeah. That angle looks like it does for sure. Oh, yeah. I believe that was a break and run. I should have a, uh, like a graphic comes up for break and run. <laughs> I don't know if they have it all at all bowling alleys, but they kind of do that. When you have like a strike or spare, it'll flash it on the screen. Yep. Well, I know Chris Austin definitely uh, has a chance here. You know, he he's not a bad player at all. It's just I think he's a little intimidated by Nick. Who wouldn't be? Me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, I mean, 
I don't know. I tend to play everyone about the same, which is terrible, but, you know. Yeah, it's a it's a bad deal when you try to play the person rather than the table. Right, yeah, because that doesn't change anything. I mean, it does a little, like how tight of safeties you play or, you know, maybe two-way shots if you think you can get back to the table of certain people. But with Nick, it doesn't matter much. If you don't get out, I think he does, you know. He He's a, a great player. I love the way he breaks, too. He jumps into it. <laughs> I don't, uh, I, I can't tell. I, I, does, I don't see him chewing bubble gum. Oh, yeah. He said he used to relieve uh, pressure. That's why he did it all the time. So if he, if he busts out the bubble gum, be, be, uh, be cautious, stay away, don't gamble. Is that what you're saying? Yep. <laughs> yeah, someone up came up earlier, and I guess he played him, just got done, and he goes, you know, I don't feel like I missed a whole lot. And he goes, but Nick just didn't miss any, so. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to. It's hard to shoot real good and get beat. You know, the other guy just shot that much better. Mm -hmm. But hey, that's the best way to lose. If you're gonna lose, lose to somebody that's shooting great. Yep, absolutely. It's a little scary to think that this isn't his prime by what he says, not even close to his prime. I could, uh, I, I haven't seen him play a whole lot, but if you ask me, it almost looks like he ain't missed a beat. Yep. And I'm not sure how much he practices anymore, but, you know, he just gave us a call this morning and said, hey, I feel like playing pool, you know, and um, that makes me think he doesn't just get out and practice like, you know, most people do that are his level. And, and I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say the reason, you know, I, I would say probably the reason is that he doesn't shoot as good as he used to. If, if that's the case, it's probably because he just doesn't have the, the energy he did when he was 30 and 40. Right. I bet he still can make shots and knows how to, I, I wouldn't think you'd ever lose the mental side of it, but just. No, no, he, uh, I believe he's on a level of play as far as his mind goes, better than most people in here, probably better than everyone. Just because he's been there and he's been under that pressure, and I'm, and I'm, I'm actually, you know, uh, it, it makes me excited to know that the people in the, the other people in the tournament didn't throw a fuss that that he wanted to play, and they actually let him play. Because I I've been to some tournaments before where Mr. Buddy Hall wanted to play, and everybody threw a fit that he was too good. It's just it it, it kind of makes me sad, you know they. They enjoy the game just as much as everybody else, and when they don't get to play, it just kind of stinks for them, if you right. ask me. Yeah, I mean, I look at it a little differently. I think I'm putting my money in either way. I might not even draw him, but if I do, that's exciting. That right, you get to play a pro. I that's mean, you're, right. You get to play nine times, been around the world, just about done and seen everything in pool. And yep. When we had Sky and Fedor here, you know, I was hoping – that one of my friends or me would draw them. That way, you know, you can have that experience and talk about how bad you suck compared to them. But you know, that's okay. Well, I don't, I don't have to play them to know that. I can, I watch them quite a bit. And yeah. Well, let's say the treble ball is just getting from the ten to the thirteen. I believe that is. He has to have the right angle, or else, because it doesn't go down the other corner. And the bank doesn't look open there. I can't tell how he wants to run it, if he wants to go 10-9-13 or 10-13-9. I think he probably. Oh, I see. Well, he's going to shoot the 13. He was looking at the angle he wanted on the right. Yeah. On the 10 to get down to the 13. Or the 9, so. I'm sorry. And then he's got the 8 ball, which I guess he can just, if he gets straight on it, he'll just draw straight back. But, yeah, that's the, that's what he's looking at. In the meantime, in the background, I, I'm remembering Guitar Hero back in the day because the song. <laughs> I hope you guys can't hear the background sound because that's what usually gets us shut off here. 
Facebook does not take it lightly as far as the music, you know, copyrights. Yeah, looks like it came up short. That, and that that's kind of silly, if you ask me. The copy strike and everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not like, uh, I wouldn't think you're profiting off of the music. No, no, and it's not that. It's the fact that they've made these bots or, you know, programs out there that can hear the sound of it. What wow. a shot. Look at that. I would that have never thought about shooting something like that, but he just, well, he seen that line and seen that path and knew it would get right where he needed to be. Yeah. That was a good shot. That was a really good shot. So what I think it is is um, copyright. They they can't sit here and monitor everybody's videos obviously so they just have these programs built into facebook and you know and if they hear too much of it or if it's too loud then that's what it is they they shut it down automatically and we've even tried to send in a request to let them know what we're doing but it doesn't work like that apparently i'm wondering if there's any sort of thing where the, the owners and the record companies of the music would then somehow try to pin that on Facebook for allowing it. I mean, it's probably something like that. It Boy, another great out by Mr. Varner there. And they weren't kidding when he didn't miss. <laughs> that was a wonderful out. Uh, David Letty, no, it is not a... Uh, we're based out of Evansville, Indiana. Well, so far, all Chris can do is sit back and watch. Yeah, he's getting a he's getting a pretty uh, cheap lesson, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> but short race, winter break, and Chris is very capable of, of just getting a shot and putting a few uh, few racks together. Right. Yeah. I, he doesn't like to run a whole lot unless they're open, but you know he can, he likes to win racks by playing good safeties and you know in the right timing. I uh I talked to Danny. Danny was uh, Varner's first victim, uh -huh. and I, I asked him after the match, I said, did you learn anything? He said, yeah, don't get into a safety battle with Nick Varner. <laughs> <laughs> so far, we haven't got a chance to see him, you know, be able to kick out of something nice, but yeah. I talked to Danny, too, and he said he never once missed, like, you know, as far as making contact, and a couple times he actually played safe back with a kick, so it's... That's always a different side of the pool that you know we like to see because it's it's not something that we can all do. I want to say this is uh, Chris's second time to the table. Is it? It's a nice wide open break. I mean, I believe it's a good opportunity for him to get on the board. And yeah, I don't see too much of an issue anywhere. You can tell, like, he's already upset, and he shouldn't be, but you can, his very first shot, he's looking up here, and he's kind of disgusted because he's maybe an inch off, you know. That's something that I see Nick doesn't do much. If he misses his position, he's just like, well, let me find something else, and that's what he's doing. That's that's a great mentality to have. I, I wish I could just let I go. wish I could do the same thing and just, you know, rather than dwelling on my bat, you know, my pass shot, look forward to my next one right but I mean Chris has sat there for you know three racks and he's he's thinking if I don't get out here and get a few games I might not get to shoot again right five uh five race to five is not too much of a race really with some with real good players Well, 
guess it got down on the five ball or three. I can't tell, but I believe it's the three. Three. Yep. Yep. If he can, if he can pocket the three ball and and kind of hold it for the two, ideally, I guess. Or maybe oh. use the two to get to the six. I, I'm not sure what he's planning. I uh, imagine he's just going to worry about making the ball. And he has the one there in the corner. So I think he can, if he doesn't get a good position, he can at least, you know, try again, basically. But I think he kind of has to shoot it now because he can't play the one first and get position on the three. Looks like that's what he might try to do. If I'm shooting confident, I would probably shoot to three ball and use that one ball later as like a right a, a freebie if I get into a jam. Yep. Well, he played good position there around the backside, which, you know, it's a little more risky, obviously. You got a couple balls you could have ran into. And, and if he missed position, there was no other backup. It was That was it, you know. Yeah, he had some traffic to weave through there. Yep. Although I don't, I've played Chris a few times, and I'm I typically am a faster shooter. I don't hardly think about too much. I just kind of see what I need, see what ball I'm shooting, and then how to get on the next couple, and then I just take off. But yep. that, that uh, gets me beat more than it probably helps me. <laughs> That's how I used to play. I would play when I first started learning. I would play one or two balls ahead, and then maybe three or four later, and. I, I tend to slow down in tournaments nowadays, but when I'm gambling and I'm feeling a little more, I, I just kind of run through them, you know? So this, I mean, he's on the six, but it's hard because he's jacked up over a ball. He's stretched out, you know? I, I think he'll be okay because the seven's up in the corner. But those are shots that, you know, if you get a little too stretched out or a little funny, it, they're, they makes it, you know, the rack a lot harder. That's, if you just, as far as, like, typical shots and, and aside from, like, jumps or kicks or banks, one of the hardest shots for me is jacked up over something. Mm -hmm. it, and he made it look pretty easy. Yeah. He, uh, he pockets this, this eight ball. He'll be, uh. Probably be getting a little confidence. We might see a little fire started. Yeah, good shot. Good, shot good out. There. Yeah, it's a little bit of a tricky run, and he performed it well. Yes, he did. Derek, as far as me missing, you should ask Matt Madden how I did on my first match. He, he's seen a few misses. See, this is his first break, so we'll see. We'll see how how his break is. Yeah, that's something that I don't practice very much. I mean, I know a lot of people do, and it's very, very important, but. I would. It's probably silly to think this way, but I, I'm not a real high percentage run out. So whether even if I did have a great break, <laughs> it probably won't benefit me very much. <laughs> yeah, so a great break benefits one or the other person, that's for sure. Kind of rough. First break and it's dry. Mm -hmm. and they're wide open. Well, except for uh, maybe the 14 there, that one. But I believe that's easily. Yeah, you can break that out pretty easily. 
If he can have it, well, yeah, he's got the 11 to start with. Looks like there's two, two kind of problem-ish clusters there. What is it, the three and the 10 and the two and the 13, I think? Yep. Yep, 13. He might be addressing one of them right here. He, both of them. Boy. That's a good shot. Yeah, Derek, uh, when my break is on, I'll make two or three, and they'll be wide open, and my break's off. I leave it wide open for the other person. So depends on the table. You know, if it's a faster table, I break really well. But if it's slower table, I break just as bad as everyone else. I don't side break. Um, I don't know. I, I never have just because I don't like the rule of uh, eight on break. I don't think that's a skilled shot. So I really don't like it whenever the rules, you know, whenever it counts. There's already enough that luck involved in the game. <laughs> you yep. don't need any more on the break. Yeah, I, I, I'm always a heads up, heads up breaker just c for the simple fact that I, c I just can't seem to control it off the side, off the you know second ball break. I just, I can't do it. I, I scratch and scratch and scratch. When I heads up break, I can usually put a little, you know better stroke on it and kind of keep it in the middle of the table. Right. Can at least control that cue ball a little more. Uh, Joseph, uh, oh, you prefer a slower table, you say. Um, yeah. I mean, when I lived around more valley tables, I played really well on valleys. Now, I came over to Diamonds, where they're all fast tables over here, and it's primarily the, you know, the table of Evansville. So I've gotten used to it, but yeah, I mean, I can understand like when I'm a little out of stroke and I have to baby shots, it's hard, but you know, when you got a stroke every single shot, it keeps you in stroke a lot better. I've I've had a few conversations with people about about that topic of of playing on slow tables and going to a tournament and playing on a fast good, you know, freshly cloth table, right? Versus, you know, people that are playing on fast cloth and then have to you know try to adapt to slow which one's h harder to overcome mm -hmm. and I, I personally I think it's easier to probably get used to slow cloth and then try to adapt to fast yeah I, I believe that too I mean I believe because you're stroking one way and you can always stroke a little harder and that you know so slower tables are, for me are easier to get adjusted to like we go over to Owensboro it's about 40 minutes away from here and they refelted theirs where it's the slower cloth and it's not bad, you know, what, you're over there for an hour or so practicing and, you know, you pretty much get used to it. But it's not that easy coming back here and trying to get that softer stroke back. I just about didn't think that three ball was going to fall for him. Yeah, I actually saved that for replays later because I was wondering how long it hung up. I think he's got the... The two ball up here on the head rail if he can get to it. Oh, what a sweet little nudge at 11 give him. If he can just pocket that two and just come straight up the table, he'll be, he'll be pretty good. Yeah, looks like the one and four pretty wide open there. He just has to, yeah, load up like you said. The position on this next shot is probably key. If he he would rather go long than short here, because if he gets up ends up coming up short, then he's going to have to get into something that he don't really want to. Right, he so would have had to run into the eight or something like that. Yep. And instead, he, you know, he displayed perfect position again. <laughs> yep, that there's pretty <laughs> ideal, and you can <laughs> shoot it one of two ways, or actually probably many more than that, just with a little low and stun it, or go to the rail preference I guess he did a little stunnerino there yeah I believe if you don't have to use the rail he probably shouldn't you know but it all depends on your stroke you know he can do obviously any you know either one a little 
bit of a window Chris had. I think might have just got shut. Yeah, if not, it's good. If not, it's on its way down. And I, I fear for the guy that gets to play Chris next, or whoever, whoever loses. I should say I can't count him out yet. Right. I, I'm the victim. I'm the next one. Oh, you are? Yep. <laughs> I get to play the the loser of this match. and Oh, boy. Well, it looks like they're both pretty easy matches, so either way. <laughs> yeah, they did put that uh, Mally cloth over in Owensboro, and um, I don't mind it. I mean, I it plays more like a valley now over there. I, uh, I do wish that uh, they would go ahead and clean off the – the felt a little bit. Um, it's balled up some since they put it on, but you know it was brand new when they put it on. So other than that, I mean, I think it rolls pretty good. And once uh, once you get used to it, you know, it plays just as any other tables. They they still are diamonds. You know, they just they got that slower cloth. As far as the big big ven venues here around in the tri-state, Owensboro is is the only one I haven't been to yet. Really, I've I've seen them on there, and I've I've got a. I've had a few chances to get down there, but I just, I just haven't got down there yet. Well, it looks like a successful break. Yeah. I like the, I like the, uh, the BCA and, and Valley has the same, or VNEA, right. have the same rules where no matter what you pocket on the break, it's still open. Right. Yeah, and that's based off of a CSI that is like the uh, owner of both those leagues. So they have almost identical rules. There's maybe two different, you know, but they're not major rules. We've just got Valley over where I'm at. I'd really like to play BCA because... From what I what I've heard and seen, the the venue there in Vegas is just second to none as far as like an amateur league type deal. Yeah, I've been there the last two years. Um, don't think I'm going this year, but yeah, it was both times it was extremely fun, and I wish I would have shot a little better. But you know, it is what it is. I'm constantly doing something else. We're trying to live stream our you know each one of ours. So that was kind of difficult, and they don't have any plugins there, so that made it even more difficult. <laughs> so we could stream for like two hours, and then everything would, you know, shut down. And that part sucked, but it was nice to know that a lot of local people that knew us, you know, were still rooting for us up there in Vegas. I want to say, uh, I, I can't remember if you guys tried to stream. Uh, or if, I don't even remember if Mickey was affiliated with OnQ yet at the time whenever him and Nate and TJ, they all went to Vegas for VNEA and played in the uh, intermediate. And I believe they got third, or was they, were they in the open? I can't remember. Um, so they did really well, and I'm not sure if they got third or second. But, um, yeah, I, he was affiliated with OnQ at the time, but I didn't go, and he didn't bring any live stream equipment at the I time. I couldn't remember. Maybe I'm thinking of the BCA one you guys did. Yeah, he was still playing Valley at the time, too, which since then, since our league has grown, you know, he hasn't been able to play, but he obviously had his first time or first, uh, yeah, venue that he went to. You know, he's he's been, to, I think, like 13 times down there. So, and it's always been VNA up till BCA, and they went for BCA. And he actually uh, went up there with the nine ball team for APA last year. Yeah, uh, he's experienced them all. I'm guessing that ten goes. Yeah, we can. Ooh boy, it's tight. But the eight's a little tricky too. I mean, I guess he could just slide down, take he, the harder shot. I, he might. I couldn't imagine him banking it. But with low, I think he might be banking it. No, but straight in. Boy, that yeah. angle's deceiving. <laughs>
Shoots pretty good for a fella that's 70 years old. <laughs> yeah, moves around like a, at least a 40 year old. Well, that wraps it up. Chris will move on to the loser side, and uh, I guess that's who you get to play, right? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna bide my time here until they call me. 